Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, the Streamlined Connection is all about the connections between mindset and um, organization and productivity and money. And, you know, I found working with my clients that most people don't realize that organization is the key to the freedom, wealth and prosperity that that they seek. And they don't realize that the stress they're feeling is actually because of the clutter and the overwhelm uh, because they're overcommitted to things. And um, all of those things are the disorganization we experience. All of us, even organized people have periods of disorganization. Um, because organization, it's not just about being tidy. It's about all the things that go into deciding who and how we want to be and about what to work on next. It's that connection that creates the control you crave and the freedom you seek. It's a balancing act. You don't want to be too hemmed in with scheduling down to the minute, but you also don't want to be so free flowing. Nothing ever actually gets finished. So organization is that powerful tool that can help all of that uh, work together. It's the, way you connect your internal desires to your external environment and your space. All of it starts in our brains. It's mindset. And the reflection of that mindset is what you see in your, your actual space. So we want to bring you uh, into alignment by creating that business, that structure, the systems that will help you build your wealth. Take more for, um, take more vacations and have more freedom. Okay, James is here. He's going to be calling in just a second. Let me just get this. Um, and he will join us in just a second. Um, and we are here. Uh, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino and I am a certified professional organizer and um, simplicity coach. And sorry, I'm trying to multitask, which is bad. And, <laughs> um, but that's because we're having technical difficulties and you just roll with them. Um, so I'm also a money breakthrough business coach. And that's why I love to find these connections for people. Um, and I work with creative, busy entrepreneurs that want to connect organization, productivity, and their money mindset. So you can build the wealth and freedom you seek. And for years, I've been studying how these habits affect that. All right, James is calling in. So let me merge him. And with any luck, we will be able to see. Good morning, James. Good morning. A little stressful, but I'm, I can't control everything. I'm here. I, am I understand. I was like, this is really unusual. James is a professional media person. There must be something actually wrong. So we're good. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I was just in the middle of the introduction of what this show is all about. And I was perfect timing because I was literally just about to begin introducing you and what you're all about. So, um, everyone. This is my friend James Lott Jr. Uh, we've known each other quite a while. He's a fascinating man and so fun to have on the show that I can't even wait to see what happens. But James has a lot of, an, of uh, credentials and so we're going to talk a little bit about those in a minute and I'm not even going to try to guess what <laughs> most of them are. But I do know a couple things. He is a certified life coach, a certified professional organizer, and a doctor of divinity. Um, and he has recently begun um, James Lott or JLJ Media, and he produces a variety of media: podcasts, YouTube stuff, um, online TV, books, and do you do anything else? Music, music, YouTube books, uh, audio dramas, yeah. Podcasts. You got everything, YouTube, and, and, and actually, I have a TV series to work on, so, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I can't wait to hear a little bit more about that, although it might not be what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so, James is here. Uh, we are going to talk mostly about ways to expand our mindset and, and expand our organizing businesses, but as always, we talk a lot about how you can apply these ideas to your own business or your own situation at home. Um, so I guess my first question really is, 
when when did you realize that you needed to think outside the box to grow your business? Uh, a few years in. Mm -hmm. uh, last month, it was 12 years to super organize. I can't believe that. Wow. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't believe it. So I'm on my 13th year. Um, someone told me that the world is changing. It's one of the younger people in my life. Always have younger <laughs> people in your life. Yes. That's always my, that's my number one thing I tell people. Um, and I was, and he, and he said to me, um, you probably should do a blog. I was like, what's a blog? And I literally, <laughs> I came to this business in my 40s. I had no idea what this stuff is. I was Did you not watch Doogie Howser? <laughs> the original blogger, right? The original blogger. Yes. Like, or, or Sex in the City. They always put time on a computer. Um, I know, I never, I was like, I still don't really know what that was. My brother had a blog. I didn't know what that was either. I didn't even pay attention. I wasn't an online person. And back then, we're talking mid-2000, well, no, late, it was early 2010. There um, mm -hmm. was no Instagram. There was no LinkedIn. There was, there was a lot of things that weren't here yet. So right. I didn't know what it was. I was like, okay, this is a place to start a blog. And tell people what you do as an organizer, that would bring. So that was the first inkling. And he said, oh, so we thought about doing videos. I was like, videos? I, at that point, I had never been on YouTube. I didn't do YouTube just started. Like, it was like, it was, it was all this, I came at the right time, I think. Everything just started yeah. up. And I was like, videos? You have this charismatic personality. Show It's you. You're the business. So show up your personality. I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, so that's the first thing. So I would say about two years in, when I first broke even, because I didn't make money in the first two years. I broke yeah. even. And when I, mean, I say broke, I mean, like, barely, I, mean I, I cheered and cried when I broke even the second and the third year. Yeah. That's my first thing with them. Okay. Um, so because you joined us late, James, we're going to give a little behind the scenes for everybody today. Um, we got to take a few breaks because we have sponsors and such. Um, and so we're going to do that. And as we go, we'll hear the engineer give us our little cues. You know all about this stuff. Um, so... Uh, this, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we're talking with James Lott Jr. today about how to explain, expand our minds to expand our businesses. Um, and after the break, we're going to get into a little bit about what he brings to the table in terms of all his, um, what's the word, the poly, poly multi universe things that both of us do. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we're going to talk about all the things we bring to the table uh, when we come back. Uh, we'll be back shortly. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. Hello and welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we're talking to James Lott Jr. today. And I, you know, we were just talking about expanding the box. I actually happen to believe there's no such thing as the box. Um, it's the mental model that we have. So there's no inside or outside. We can just expand. And I know that's what you actually mean. <laughs> Um, but we have that paradox or that paradigm that's still out there in the world that you somehow have to break out of your box. Um, and earlier in the weeks, someone in one of my coaching groups mentioned, I like my box. I created a comfortable box. I would like it to have bigger windows and expand a little bit, maybe amoebas, but I don't want to leave it. And that I thought that is a brilliant way of looking at it because it is about expanding and bringing other things to the four. So let's hear about your story about how you brought all these things into your organizing business that then has has morphed into this media thing. Yeah, no, I I, I say I use terms that I agree with you. I mean, language has changed. Uh, you know, it changes. Mm -hmm. It's ever evolving, right? So I say I hate I hate the box. I mean, I'm not I'm not a box person, but I know <laughs> for a lot of people, you say that gets their attention, they kind of get a re frame of reference. But then I go into exactly. then I like then like you I go into like. Well, really, there is no box, and yeah, I do the whole thing. Like, I agree with you that too. Um, but for me, I've always lived my life out loud, just big, bold, whatever, whatever industry I was in. I always expanded, and I mm -hmm. found it also. But even when you expand, it actually sometimes even narrows your focus even more. It, it does both. It's this weird thing. It does both. You're like suddenly things become clearer. Um, your business does really well. 
Um, and you're like, well, I, I should have thought this like 10 years ago, like, oh, it's kind of fun. Right. For me, uh, it's been incremental. So it's like, mm-hmm. so the, after I started the blog, that's what I started, I started a blog, which got the attention of a radio station. Oh. And the radio station said, could you make this into a weekly show? So then that's when the Super Organizer show was born almost seven years ago. Which mm-hmm. you've been on. Um, and then, but then that was then the show got me attention to an online YouTube channel, which is mm-hmm. after which I was there for eight or seven years. Um, and one of the things that we decided to do was the Super Organizer Christmas show. So what I would do, I did 12 episodes, I was so proud of it, 12 episodes where we took all the organizing things that are related to the holidays. Mm-hmm. I did a speech. Interesting. Um, so, you know, some little fun at the same time. So I noticed that that, so, but like these, these things were all working with, because I always tied back into, and I'm a super organizer, and you're probably superorganizer.com, and I'm also, and I'm also an organizer, and I'm an organizer, and I'm an organizer. And I was all, it was all right. tied in together, but they all were different parts. Then, you know, then we're not done, of course. Then we, I went into one day, I was like, I write songs, I do music. And two songs came to mind for me, and they both were like organizing related material lyrics. So I wrote them, put them a dance, mm-hmm. and put them out, and they were very successful. Um, and so I put two, so I have two, orga- I think I'm the only person that's organizing songs in the world out there that are actual dance organizing songs. I put that out yeah. there. Yes. And There's then, a silly song some of our colleagues sing at conference, but. Yeah. I don't even know the words. I'm like, what? <laughs> I guess because people thinking, I was like, I'm trying, I'm trying to make organizing as common and regular place as anything else that we do. We, you know, we, yes. we, we have plumbing, we have electricians, we have gardeners, or should be an organizers. We have housekeeping, we should have organizers. Uh, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but it was all incremental. So I had, I had that going on, and of course we all write books. I've organized a book, of course, but also I learned. That along the way, we're in a time right now where every there's all this free space out there. It doesn't cost any money. That you can get yourself out there. And you don't have to be this you know extraordinary person to do it either. So there's TikTok. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know what TikTok is? I thought I was too old to, but apparently it's okay. People of our generation are on there. And I started one of my series, very deliberate. One of my series is called How to Get Super Organized in Under a Minute. Because it's a, it's a well, back then it was a minute long, now it's three minutes, it was a minute long. I gave right. organizing tips under a minute. And I was made sure I had to let them know I'm the super organized. Like you always mention it. So I have that going on. So it's like, it's like you just you start to see, I just started adding all these things. And then they all still tie back into, and then when I started the media business, it's still, it's all media. So it all, so that naturally fit as, as a division of that. But it was right. like little things along the way, I started adding that actually could make sense, whether it's, whether it's silly or fun or serious. They mm-hmm. made, and then last year during oh, in 2020, now that's, that could, now that's two years ago, during the pandemic when <clears throat> I couldn't organize, LA was, was just shut down, um, and there was a lot of I got a lot of backlash for being a male in the industry, so I decided to start this series called I Know Stuff, and we talked mm-hmm. about this. So, yes, <laughs> uh, I, I did this series that was very popular with with the ladies actually very popular. It's called the the Man and Super Organizing Industry series. I did like seven episodes. And they were extremely, I mean, people were like, oh my God, thank you for saying, you know. So, I, so I've so i learned how to bend with the times, get my ears to the ground, read the room, and then like mm-hmm. ask you as I went along. Oh, I love that. Um, so this leads me to ask as well, like when you are working with clients, who's your favorite client? Who's your ideal client? What do you love to do? Oh my God. I think so right now, because now I'm very fortunate. I want to make sure I'm very blessed and fortunate I can choose who I work with now. Mm-hmm. I'll start a lot of time. Well, well I mean, let me, take, let me take that lie back. You can choose who you want to work with any time in your career. Right. But I, I was, when I was starting out, I was less discerning. Right. I, was, I wanted the money. I wanted the experience. I wanted to help everybody. Exactly. Right. But I, I, so I want to make sure I say it differently. You can always choose, but I feel more now I can choose even, what was it, I'm almost said more better. Not English. Uh, mm-hmm. I do have. I swear. Um, <laughs> no, it, so I can just. Do, I can now. I can really do it now. Where I now it's to the point where um, my clientele is usually over sixty years old, female. Most of them are of color, either Latina or black 
or or um, at what is Indian, um, and they're usually it's, it's just change of life. It's either mm-hmm. um, husband passed or kids moved out or kids moved in, <laughs> which is actually right. does that. <laughs> that's it. Um, retirement uh, or a major event happens, and they call me up and say, "James, I need your help," and I love it. I love their attitude. I love um, that they're open and willing to get started. I know from my experience, people my age, I'm in my 50s, a younger, a little less relaxed. They, they want help, but it's a little harder for them to let go of things. I don't know, this, this generation is like, okay, what we, what we, got, we got to do? We got, they, they know what they want. Like, I want this to happen. I want, th- I want this room to look like this. How do we get there? Right. I love those kinds of things. Sure, oh, that's, that's it. And I, I always say, I don't work for you, I work with you. So that, those are my favorite clients. Oh, that sounds good. Now, do you have some sort of a signature system that you walk all your clients through that's adaptable depending on their space and volume and desires? That's a great question, actually. I've never been asked that before. I don't. I mean, I hmm. mean, I, think like that, I do have a system for myself, my consultation system, how I do and everything, but I, I, I'm the product. I right. realize that. I realized that five years in, they hire me because of me, because right. of my personality. So I come in bright eyed, bushy tailed, smiling, laughing, the right amount of jokes at the right time, the right amount of serious at the right time. I'm, I know how to be empathetic, I'm non judgmental. Mm-hmm. And I make sure I feel that when I come through the door. Uh, and I'm just like, here. And I just, I noticed for a, a lot of clientele that I have, I'm a surrogate son, surrogate husband, surrogate boyfriend, surrogate cousin, surrogate brother. So I just, I easily just go into that role. So I guess my style is just me. I mean, I'm just like, I just kind of, I, I everyone is very unique. Mm-hmm. I just kind of, I listen to them very carefully. I write down everything um, and I read the room and I say, okay, oh, they're this, oh, I've seen, they're saying this word five times. I'm very, I, I'm a big picture person. I used to be a manager in, in the corporate world. I'm a big picture person. I don't know how to mm-hmm. manage. I used to be an event organizer. So I know all the, that's the detail. So when they say, mm-hmm. I just want this table to look like, you know, Christmas every year. I mean, I, I, I hear those words. So right. my style is like, I repeat mean, everything back to them. So what, mm-hmm. you, what you say is, which is also a coaching thing. I'm also a coach too. Um, mm-hmm. I come in, James Lodge Jr., whatever that is. I'm just smiley and happy and non-judgmental. Let's get this. What do you need? I'm, I come in like that. And usually they're like, oh, okay, what do I need? <laughs> hey, would like to ask you, what do you need? Would you like that to happen on a regular basis? What do you need? Right. Well, we've got to take another quick break. Um, But when we come back, um, we're going to be talking more with James Lott Jr. And we're going to get into a little bit about what being a coach also brings to the table as an organizer, because you said a couple things that I really want to follow up with and I think are really important. Um, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we'll be right back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. Welcome back. I'm Mary Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on the Bold Brave TV Network. I'm here with James Lott Jr. And we're laughing about the fact that we're organizers and we keep messing up time today. So, you know, there's that. How funny is that? How funny is that? (laughs) It's our little secret. Yeah. Um, but before the break, we were talking about how James is able to read a room and he brings that skill. And while he doesn't think it's a signature system, he does kind of walk his clients through the same series of things, whether or not he or they realize it. Um, and I'm wondering your thoughts, James, on on how much extra goodness it brings to an organizing session to have those listening skills. I'm sure you got some in divinity school and some in coaching and what that does to the results and the lastingness of those results. I just made up a word probably, but (laughs) the long lasting results rather than having to get reorganized again six months from now. What tell me your thoughts on that. Great question. Um, and I will tell you, I will say this a thousand percent. Um, the schooling that I did to get my doctorate and and the life coaching I got at, I'm going to give a shout out, the Coach Training Alliance in Colorado, my, my teacher mm-hmm. trainer, Lori Cameron, I love her pieces. Um, 
both of those helped my life period. It helped mm -hmm. me personally in my personal life and yeah. learn how to listen because there's a whole section of coaching. It's about listening. It literally right. is about listening. So, and, and the art of listening. I actually teach classes on this and the art of listening. Mm -hmm. I am an active listener, but it's a passive listener. So being a good listener now, I I pick up on all kinds. It helps me in my business. It helps me. So yes, yeah, so I need to help them, but it helps me go, this is what they want. This is what they need. This is the question I should ask next. And of course, when I became an organizer and a life coach, I wasn't even a radio or TV host yet. I didn't mm -hmm. And you didn't realize how much it would help that. Yeah. I got told I got told by many celebrities, you're one of the best interviewers you've ever had. I mean, compare me to Larry King and Oprah Winfrey. I was just, I just I cry when they tell me that. But he said, because they always say, because you listen. I have it on, I have it on tape, folks. I have it on tape. You know, because you listen. But that's mm -hmm. what I learned. I learned that active listening um, and hearing the actual words, listening uh, listening to their bodies. Also, it's another mm -hmm. thing. It's a technique also, watching their body language, um, watching the pauses, seeing what's frustrating them, um, the, and also the words that what they repeat. It just, it's, Helped me immensely, and yes, and it has helped in the in the long term success of my clients. Going, I because of you, James. I tried this thing, and mm -hmm. it, it, we said yesterday, and it worked. Where I'm not on top of them every time. When I come back, they'll say, "Look what I did." I'm going to show you something I did on my own, and because I gave them the because the, I listened to them, and they're and they're so unique, and I gave mm -hmm. them a little nugget of wisdom. They tried it on their own, and it was great, and yeah. so. Feel more like they could. They tell me all the time. I tell the younger when I saw all the time. Don't worry about retention. People are like, well, if you if you finish with them, they're done. What do you do? I go get more clients. <laughs> but I said, but no, right. but, but but the thing is, you want them to be on their own. You want, there's some there's plenty of folks out there that need your help, right, Miriam? Right. It's it's um, it's interesting how many. Uh, I find it especially with new organizers. They just want to go in and do it. I just talked to a woman who had a, a newer organizer in, um, or is having a newer organizer. She went with the other person because the needs match was a little better. She didn't know, need to go as deep as I go with my clients. But I, I warned her nicely. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to go. I have no experience with the organizer she's working with. She's brand new. Okay. I said, but what you want to do is make sure that she's listening to how you do things. And um, I keep seeing online, there's a lot of organizers that are like, I want, I don't even want the client there. I just want to do it without them. And then I'm like, that's great for certain people that are used to a bunch of assistance and things, but for day-to-day -day living people or people that are running their own business out of their home, that doesn't actually work. They will be more frustrated on the other end. Do you think that's true? I completely agree. You said yeah. it. Yeah. I have clients who are entrepreneurs or mm -hmm entrepreneurs or so whatever words you want to use and they are at home and they actually want to learn a system they want to yeah. learn it what they want to do it themselves they're frustrated because they can't seemingly can't do it themselves they're right. frustrated because they can't seem to figure out the system so i'm here to come and say well okay you look. so i always my, my big one of, one, one of my styles is turning your bad habits into good one that's one right. of my things so they're like but his shoes are just always right there at the door and he was a size 17 you know i'm always showing all of them so I go, well, put a basket there. And even though, and even though it seemed for us, it's something so so obvious. So <laughs> obvious. But I didn't think that way. Or they're so busy. It's if I listen to her, she's doing 10 things at once, has a young baby. She's only she's not talking about a basket, but she goes, Great idea, Jane. And they get this cute little basket and all the shoes go and it is soft. And then right. and, and I so you basically you unclog them. Right. Well, and I think. Good, really good professional organizers have the ability to see both the big picture and all the details. And most of our clients are going to be mired in the details. That's why they aren't organized. And it can be a hundred other factors involved, but bottom line is every single one of them gets bogged down in details. Um, and um, I think it's great when we can, I love that thought of unclogging. Um, and, and the, even the body language, like they don't, they don't pause long enough to think what they feel about something. And so, I don't know, I I, I just have to share this quick story about oh. holiday sweaters. Oh. Holiday sweaters, everybody. 
I love holidays. My generation invented the ugly sweater party. It was a thing before everyone knew it was a thing. It was just kind of underground. It's kind of punk rock. Um, <laughs> but I had a client who dressed very kind of Las Vegas resort wear, you know, like that. Yeah. Lots of labels, lots of gold, lots of chain in her most of her time, like 98 percent of her wardrobe was that. And then we're cleaning out her closet one time and I found these like five holiday sweaters. They were like lined up on the shelf in one pile in the back. And I'm like, what are these? <laughs> I don't see you wearing these. Are these just for ugly holiday parties? I get the Christmas one, but what, then why do you have one for, you know, Halloween and one for Thanksgiving and one with an Easter bunny on it? Like, what is this? And she's like, well, those are for dropping my kids off at school. I'm like, what? She's like, the other moms judge you, so you got to wear them on drop-off days <laughs> around the holidays. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. First. Um, and then I said, okay, but your kids are now in middle school. They're not, like, elementary anymore. Can you let them go yet? And she's like, oh, I don't know. So she leaves the closet, goes, gets a cup of coffee or a bottle of water or something, and I put one of them on, and I had my back to her when she came in, and I turned around, and the look on her face was like, oh, my God. <laughs> And I said, wait, is that an, oh my God, that sweater looks amazing on you? Or a, oh my God, what was she thinking? And she's like, okay, they can go. They can go. <laughs> but it's, it goes to that, listen to what your client's saying, watch their body language. Like all of those things come into helping them make decisions. Um, and then they get a better result. I do. I, I said, again, a, lo a lot of my clients, are like, they're almost, they have an idea, they know what they kind of want to have happen. They're just like, I don't, how do I execute it? I just know how to execute mm -hmm. it. You know what right. the, and usually if I do one thing towards it, then it does, like the drain unclogs, and they're like, oh, then they see it. And right. And then they get there. And so then they then they replicate it somewhere else. Maybe not yes. even. And that's, and, that's, and that's the point. I said, I want everybody, I want everybody to feel like in their home or their office, I do a lot of residential, but I do business mm -hmm. too that they can do it themselves. I don't yeah. want to be so dependent on me, just like keep making money. And blah, blah, that's just, that's to me, it's, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this, and I'm, I'm very open about how I say things. I think it's very lazy and pressure organizers to do that. It's very lazy and selfish to do that. I think we should yeah. be teaching, those who want to be taught how to get organized, we should be teaching them. Those like you said, you just want to, I, I, I work with people in Hollywood, they just want it done. That's different. I go in, just do it, I've done a few of those, but that's fine. Yeah. But even when, you know what's funny, even when I do those, I don't feel good. I always like, I wish you were still here so I can just say, do you really like that? I mean, I, just, I, I really want to make yeah. things for the client to be happy, but I'll work wherever. But if, I, but if I was, I'm just like, I, I like the ones who are involved, actually. I mean, the, mm -hmm. I feel like one size fits all. It's not just my way or the highway. I mean, I really Except, want Yeah, to that's the other thing. Like, I, how do we adjust it for the way you think? Um, I, I'm the same. I do both. But I always feel weird, like I'm not giving them my best when I'm not helping them with the transformation part. I agree. I totally agree with that. Well, they yeah. Do. It's, really, it's kind of weird. I agree with that. All right. So back to how we, so part of why I wanted to explore that a little bit is always showing how people can learn from other things. So even if you're not a professional organizer, you're still able to get some value out of this show, out of this conversation, apply it to your own situations. Uh, and that is bringing other ideas into what you do to make them stronger. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you learned marketing because, well, you did corporate events. Did you, even at that point, did you think of that as marketing? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Everything's marketing. Oh my god. My me call myself James Lott Jr. is marketing. I knew that everything we're we're walking marketers. Right. And that's one thing that I've learned. And I've been working since I was 15 years old, and I realized every job I ever had, there was some sort of marketing in it, whether oh, yeah. it was myself, the company, whatever. And but when I, I worked for the insurance industry for eleven years, um I, I was I was I had two two big jobs. I was the event management director and ran all the corporate events all over the country. I was also their uh, education director, and I had all their CE, all their mm -hmm. education. So I had to learn how to market these events to get folks to come so they would take their CE. I mean, it, was, it all fed itself. So I'm used right. to multiple hyphenate jobs. Um, but what I learned about the marketing piece was, um, you know, how to get them there, what, mm -hmm. what's the value of our product, 
because that, that, that we told them, here's our product. We're teaching these four classes. These are marketing our teachers, instructors, marketing the location. It's in sunny Palm Springs. So in oh May. my God, how many flyers or Facebook posts have you seen about events that don't put the date or the location? And then you're like. Miriam, I can't look at, I can't. Uh, yeah. I, well, see, it's just weird. Because now that I work in, in television and stuff, there's certain things I can't look at anymore the same way. I do music, I listen to things. I mean, I, so when it comes to marketing things, I go, why is that big and why is that small? It should be reversed. Why is that in that color font? Why is that in that? I mean, I look at every, I, I can't. I yeah. just, it, it bugs me. I can't, I can't do it. Um, it's all but, connected, people. It's all yeah. connected. <laughs> and if you figure it out, it streamlines your, streamlines your messaging. And what I learned about the, the big thing about marketing is, and this is back in the day, she's always say this when on the internet, more than two clicks, people are done. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. apply it to, I apply it to life. If they have to really read a flyer hard, they're done. Make right. it for them. If you have a message in a video or make it a spoon feed, I let's have a spoon here, spoon feed them. <laughs> I have spoon so I don't have one. Um, this, but, is, this is making me think I should put one in my pencil cup. Yeah, I usually have, I have, I have, I have a, I have a left-handed scissors. Um, that's no story. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, my whole I thing is. I have a fancy that, letter opener. Ruler, folks. I use rulers for things. I have yeah. one over here. Yeah. See, I we know where our things are, people. We know where our things are. What's the joke for the laziest people out there? Because we, you know, I know that's, that's a whole yeah. joke because we're not lazy, clearly, but we like to know where everything is. I am. I admit I make my choices about how interested I am in doing something. And so <laughs> I would rather be watching TV or reading a book at almost any given moment. Thank you. Me too, girl. Me too. All right. Sorry. So, okay. So, but yeah. So, I, I think that, you know, marketing, I realized when I came to organizing, it was sort of out the gate. See, when I started, I, I went to Vistaprint. And like everybody else did back in the day, so this is the late 2000s, and got like 500 postcards with like my big logo on the front and literally just my website, phone number, and name, my picture, and that was it. Um, and then I just, and I said non judgmental or whatever. And then I walked the streets and I was passing out postcards. I did the old fashioned way. And luckily, I live in Los Angeles. That is so funny. I was literally going to say, I bet you started with club cards, didn't you? I did, girl. I did. I did too. I had club cards. Um, for those know, of you youngsters kidding. out there, oh God, do I have okay. one handy? Yeah. Mine, I, I put mine away in my little archive box, but I do have. I, I mean, know I, they're they're tucked away in the archive over there. But club cards are like four by six or yeah. six by. It was four what by is six, it? Five by seven, six by nine. It was like so. Five by seven. Mine was four by six. Yeah, five by um, seven. Mine and back in the late 80s through the 2010s, yes. it was how bands would market themselves or events at clubs or like fashion shows. And, you know, so they're called club cards because it was a two sided marketing piece, usually glossy, very slick. It made you feel like the people knew what they were doing. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what you say. Exactly what it was. I, I almost say I was, but it's my card. Um, but I did. And I actually. Picked an area I wanted to work, and uh -huh. said, because you go and manifest what you want, right? And so I picked where I want to work, and I was like, but here in LA it was Melrose. It's a, a mm. I was past. I walked through all the stores, like, hi, I'm just going to drop this off. I didn't hound anybody, and mm -hmm. I got this. Drop this off. Put some here at the Starbucks. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I got clients. I really did. I got clients. Yeah, uh, I did that too. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. But I realized that marketing was going to be the biggest piece of for me to grow. But and later, I knew later it would be word of mouth but first it'll be marketing and then i, I gotta get the clients so when i get them hooked then they'll tell their friends I, that's why that's my thought you know just keep you know, they'll yep. do friends and so on word of mouth that's the one piece that i thought would happen that never really did oh really i think it's the shame factor but we can visit this again after the break Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Yeah. Organizers all over the country have had this experience where they get put on the media. So it's both word of mouth and the media thing. You get a client that tells every one of their friends, then you get all their friends. Never in 21 years of being in business has that happened for me. I've had people... Years later, go so and so used you five years ago. They recommended you, but it's never been a lead to 
a bunch of clients. And I think part of that is the shame. And so back to what you were saying in the first segment about we need to make this like plumbing and electricians and handymen and, and house cleaners, like, you know, everybody needs these services to have a great life. And um, I'm going to tell you something. Okay, so here's what's funny. I think it's also cultural. So here's yeah. the thing. For me, 80, 80% of my business is word of mouth now. Right. No. And I think the cultural thing and the location thing. So yeah. even though California is west, farther west than New Mexico, New Mexico is, is one of those places. It's kind of like Wyoming, I would say, and Colorado have this very Western independent spirit. That yeah. is, I can do it myself. Back to that. And I would say that's the biggest thing I've had to overcome. Yeah. But early on, too, I remember someone from New Jersey telling me they got put in their little tiny town newspaper and they got like 87 calls. Yeah. I've had a monthly TV show on the local channel. I've had a weekly or a monthly radio show. I've been featured in all the major media at least twice a year since I was in business, if not four times a year. And I've gotten maybe seven clients out of all that. That's, okay, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so it, it there's a lot to be said for location, but where I did get my clients was networking and talking and going out in public and handing off my information and telling people what I do. Um, that's what got me launched. I, I, I have to say this because I mean, this is not to brag or anything like that, but you know, um, I went on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Mm -hmm. History. I was on Anderson Cooper. I've been on national news too. So I, was say, national I was gonna say something. I was saying is that yeah. it's because I was looking for a bump. Yeah. Because we we're coming out of 2020, LA we couldn't work. LA just was shut down. Yeah. The studio shut down. We had the, the cases of COVID were rampant. We just couldn't do anything. So I was looking for a bump in my business. And then I got asked to make history on Jimmy Kimmel Live on my birthday last year. I was his first guest ever since the pandemic started. And I was the only guest. I, was, I, was I didn't know that was the first. I saw it, so yeah. I it was. First, I didn't realize it was your. I mean, his first virtual one. Okay, first one in person, fourteen year, fourteen months. He says it's fourteen months, three hundred something days. I yeah. was the first person. So I said, as organizer, everybody knows I said I was an organizer. So I got a huge bump. Now, which might be something that. What's funny is, I didn't get a lot of business off of that, but it reminded a lot of my clients. Older clients were like, that's why you still organizing? Like, they didn't know I was still organizing. So, right, I, so they had you back? Yes. Yeah. So I reunited with like seven clients I hadn't worked with in like five, six years. So that's why I was being kind of so weird, but it got me noticed. So I'm saying, but for me, I was going to mention for um, locations, because you're right about that. I, I decided a few years ago to really focus on the Black and Latino communities. Mm -hmm. And it felt like they didn't know what an organizer was. Right. And that it was something that we could have, that you could have. They just, just didn't know what that was. They know what everything else was. So I started, I started doing classes and educating them out here that we're, we're, you know, we're service industry too. And you can have, it's not in yeah. to have an organizer. It's not this special service. Um, so what they do, and I, I go ahead and go back to that age group of 60 and over, they have no shame. And they tell their friends, hmm. you, know, you, need a, you need an organizer. Hire this nice young man. He got, and, they, and I love it. They'll do it in front of them. And yeah. they're like, here's his number, and talk to him. He's really sweet. And so I noticed that the cultural thing is they mm -hmm. don't seeing their friends <laughs> into, into hiring me. So it's a whole, so I'm saying, I agree to yeah. say it's a whole cultural area thing. So my word of mouth, they said 80% of it is, is all work because um, mm -hmm. the same area in South Los Angeles, it's Black and Latina, and they're all a certain age. And they all just like, I'm a friend, I'm a friend, I'm a friend, I'm a friend, I'm a friend. I'm a friend. And it's good. And so with some of them kind of, you know, don't need me for a while. I get these others over here and they don't need me for a while. So so my yeah. fortunate that I that word of mouth has been something that's been wonderful to me. It's been wonderful. Yeah. And I think part of that, I mean, part of the discussion I want to make sure people are getting is that you are bringing these things, you are bringing who you are into these situations. I am a native New Mexican. I know that that's an issue here. And so I've done lots of outreach. I do more media because older clients call me back for another project because they remember and they see me and then they tell their friends. And that's why it takes a long time. Um, I know, you know, does it work to go networking or does it work to do YouTube? What, what works for you? Um, and it can take a little while to figure that out. And you know, it's not instant success. And even 
you know, influencers um, come and go and there's cycles of them because algorithms change, trends change. Um, you know, I started out as a Twitter influencer, like I was on Twitter like week two or three or something crazy. And I was an influencer right up until a certain point where they did, where they changed yeah. to longer tweets. Yeah. And then everything changed and it was like, well, now I'm not the clever snarky organizer everyone's come to know and like. Now I'm like actually giving you whole thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it didn't like tank my business or anything, but it definitely changed it. And it shot other people up um, above me in the frequency that people were seeing. So um all of it is just, you know, marketing is a constant ongoing effort, just like organizing, constant ongoing effort. You have to watch and listen to that too. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to see. I, I have analytics, like my analytics. I look at what things I, all the time. Once a week, I look at them. Mm -hmm. And I see what's kind of working this week. It may not be working for a while. It may work later. Certain times of the year, you know, January, mm -hmm. I always get organized. March, spring cleaning, I always get organized. Um, back mm -hmm. to school, I was looking for tips. I mean, there's certain types of year, it, it's, it, you have to kind of watch that and see mm -hmm. where these algorithms change and see what gets pushed into the, the ether and what gets pushed into the forefront on uh, certain mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very much. Yeah, it's, um, it's complicated, people. It's an interconnected, complex, adaptive system. <laughs> the thing is, it's not going to have overnight success. And I think, mm -hmm. A lot of us are successful now or successful presently. It took time to get there. It's literally one foot in front of the other. There's mistakes made. I made some mistakes, mm -hmm. but you can always change them. I had a year off because I had an illness and I still came back and, and got, you know, it's like life happens. Things yeah. happen whenever. It's a 10 year and, overnight success situation. Exactly. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I got into Forbes magazine. I was like, oh my good. I got, I got profiled a couple years ago and that helped me. I like, but that was like, that was like 10 years in. That wasn't the first year I came out. I mean, like, you know, that really happens sometimes, but it really doesn't happen. Um, so you have to kind of just remember it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the entrepreneur takes a lot. And that's what it is. Really. All right. So we have talked a lot today about <laughs> how various parts of running our business are affected by what other interests and um, skills and talents and experience we are bringing to the table. And you can use all of those for your own organizing business or other business or just at your home with your kids. It all works the same way. It's the process. And professional organizers, especially really great ones like James and I, will bring some coaching things so that we hear what you're actually trying to say even when you aren't quite sure how to um, articulate it and we bring um, that empathy and that knowledge that it's okay to not know that yet and will help empower you to be better organized so thank you so much for being here james you can find out more about james at um what is your oh uh Give me, I do actually know your website is helps a lot with two t's.com. I'll tell you what it is. I, I, I know how to do, I'll, I'll do this for you. So you can okay. follow, so you can always follow me where all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms. My website is a lot, I do this 20 times a day. And then my website is called a lot of help, that's with two t's, as you're saying, dot com. Go ahead and, and go ahead and do that there. Um, on, on, um, on social media, you can find me at the Super Organizer or Super or Super O or Organizing Show. It's everywhere, and I'm also my shows on every streaming service platform you can look at. And my company is called JLJ Media. You can go on YouTube. I'm an online network with 35 shows uh, weekly, and that's on YouTube, JLJ. Media. All right, all the details will be in the description. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. As always, you can send feedback, comments, or questions to Miriam at MoreThanOrganized.net. And next week we will be here with. Um, uh, Janet Taylor. Oh, and we're going to be talking about creating an organized life. So I'm super excited to talk to her as well. And we'll see you here next time. Have a delightful day.